Are we live, Randall? We're fucking live. Rafe, we got to do the clap. This is a, we're going to do it one, two, three. Boom. Fucking right. Feels good. It feels good to do that with you because Libby and Randy left me out of the clap for quite some time. Really? We just started doing the clap to sync up the videos. Right? Isn't that why we do the clap, Randy? That is why we do the clap. <laughs> Sound speeding. Comes with penicillin. Uh, is there a boom mic in here somewhere? A hold for room tone. <laughs> what, who was it that was like <laughs> fart tone? <laughs> yes. Hold for fart tone. <laughs> was that you? Were we on set and you were like hold for fart tone? <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, it's, or was I think it was you were doing the <clears throat> Emerson commercials and yeah, you did. Yeah, at home. <laughs> yeah. Hit him with the fart tone. Hey, today is a special fucking day on Slap City. Especial. <laughs> we got uh, my fucking partner, Rafe Williams, in the fucking house. Yeah. It's exciting. You're taking Libby's place today. What do you here. think? What do you think of the setup? It's tight. I like it. We got some guitars. I know Randall parties, but he also got a soft cuddly side. I got a cat tower. Uh, Pretty much like a cat city. That's Tower cool. of power. Yeah, it's nice. Mm-hmm. Everything looks good. Randy's got his shit together. I like it. You have to almost say that being put on the spot, though. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but, I mean, it is very cool. It's ni- It's a nice DIY setup. We have our nice obituary picture right behind you. That's a fan, Jeremy Dolce. Um He's not dead, but he looks like it in the photo. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he could be on my T-shirt right now. <laughs> With, like, lightning all around it. Yeah. <laughs> like a moon in Rest the corner. Rest in power, Jeremy Dolce. <laughs> he would fucking love that. <laughs> he would love those shirts. Oh, man. Yeah, it's nice. You got the fiber optic light behind you. It's yeah. Very, it's very fancy. We're doing it. You see those two cats back there? The 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 sewn ones? I, well, there's four. Oh, there's... Well, I... One, yeah. two... Oh, no, I think there's three sewn ones. Max Bueller hand sewed those and sent them to us. Well, that was sweet of him. That was very He's sweet. A sweet boy. Sweet boy. But yeah, we got the baby Rafe Williams here. I'm excited. I'm here. I'm ready to party. I'm ready to slop out. Technically, the second time you've done the podcast. Yeah. Not technically. Well, first time I've done it in studio. I did it at Flyover Festival last year. Mm-hmm. Did a short segment. Uh Big shoes to fill. Libby Higgins on vacation. Yep. Flopping her tits around in LA right now. Yeah, dude. She was wearing did you, <laughs> Dude, did you she was wearing this fucking bomb ass sexy two piece swimsuit. Oh, I seen it. You Libby, did? I seen you. Did I you, see you, girl. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Were you uh jerking off to it in your de- designated <sighs> jack off time? I was today? trying to, but man. I think you've got a new job where you come home at a different time. I've got to, like, really get my scheduling. i got to get my jack scheduling better, Randy. I don't. <laughs> she surprised me. Came home at 3 o'clock, and that could have been Uh-oh. compromising on another day when I didn't have so much work to do. I literally walk in the room at, like, 3 or walk in the house at 3.05, and Rafe was, like, <laughs> <laughs> sitting at his desk and turned around. He's like, oh, <laughs> you're home early. <laughs> My, my. I was like, yeah, I worked at Taco, or, you know, at the taco place today. It was, uh, we worked 10 to 3. You were like, ah, it's usually my jack schedule. 3 to 5, that's my window. It's a good jack window. Get your work done. Then, you know, clear your mind. <laughs> clear the mechanism. We were talking a couple, uh, Randy, when were you we talking about the jack off and jerk off stuff? Like a couple weeks ago, right? Right. So we were talking about how, like, Kids say jack off, yeah, and adults say jerk off. You know, like yeah. a bunch of kids are gonna be like, "Oh yeah, me and my buddies, we're having a sleepover. We're gonna have pizza rolls, and we're all gonna jack off together." Yeah, you know. Yeah, I remember those sleepovers where we all said we were gonna jack off together. Don't you, Randy? <laughs> Do you remember how yeah. that wouldn't be alienating as a child in junior no. high at all? Uh, <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. I got rented Terminator too. <laughs> I got some popcorn, and we can all jack off together. (laughs) Um, And then they just beat the shit out of that kid. Yeah, you never had a full a circle circle jerk a jack off. No, with any buds. No. Where did this idea of this jerk circle jerk come from? 
Because uh, I have heard that a lot. I, I don't know the etymology of circle jerk. I didn't know I was going to get put on the spot. We're going to need to Google that. Randy's on uh, it. I'm guessing it comes from pornography. And there's probably usually a, a woman on the receiving end of that circle jerk. In the middle. It's like spin the bottle, yeah. but with your cum. But I also think it was an insult. I remember being an insult in a lot of like uh, Yeah, movies. like. You're like, this is turning into a real circle jerk, Sergeant. Yeah, I guess Get your head out of your ass. We got to attack the Viet Cong. And so it's like a lot of Vietnam <laughs> movies, I feel like I've heard it. In. Clint Eastwood yeah, says it in true. a lot of his movies where he gets to be racist and pretend like he's playing a character when it's just Clint Eastwood. Is he still alive? He's alive. He's he, alive, and I think he could kick all our asses. He's really, he's still kicking. Oh, he's yeah. He's like 90 years old. Yeah. Like Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman's an old boy, too. Gene's an old boy. I used to work at... Uh, I used to work with a doctor when I worked in surgery when I first got out of the Army whose uh-huh. wife was related to Clint Eastwood, and he went to Christmas dinner at Clint Eastwood's house oh my one God. year. And he's like, weirdest experience because he has a ton of illegitimate children. Clint Eastwood <laughs> yeah. does? So he's like, we had Christmas dinner with like kids he was seeing for like the second time in their whole life and oh their families God. because he's just like, I guess he's a man about town, a cat around Hollywood, and he's just... Dip, just. He's dipped his Eastwood into quite a few places. <laughs> he's just dunking that little Eastwood <laughs> into dunking. all over. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Did I pull out or did I stay in? <laughs> well, I got news for you. I came real hard in your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Nine God. Nine months later, I assume a baby punches its way out of a woman's vagina. And oh, we have yeah. another Eastwood. 100% punching. <laughs> with like a Western. It's like, bam, bam, yeah. bam, right when the baby comes out. <laughs> Man, that is wild. Yeah, it was a crazy story. What's weird is the doctor's name was Dr. Wood. Just Wood. Yeah. And I'm like, so you're Dr. Wood, and you married... Someone who's related to Eastwood. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just thought that was strange. Yeah, that is uh, very odd. I, I am also surprised that he wasn't just like super fucking excited about it. Like, dude, I got to meet fucking Clint he, well, Eastwood. Yeah, I mean, there was some element of excitement, but I think he's just like, it was such an awkward vibe. that yeah. There was like, he's like, there were literally, you know, dozens and dozens of people. And some of them were children from illegitimate affairs that were like. He's like, it was weird. It was very Hollywood. He's like, it didn't feel like Christmas. It felt like yeah. a weird formal dining event. They're just so fucking rich. And it's fucking Clint mm-hmm. Eastwood. Like, I bet those kids were yeah. even like, holy fuck, dude, my dad's Clint Eastwood? Like, can you fucking believe this? Yeah, but they were like, probably also like, my dad's a piece of shit. <laughs> I've yeah. only seen him twice <laughs> in my whole life. Yeah. I'd be like, I guess it, like, it would be cool to have a famous dad, but they're like, if you only saw him one time, <laughs> you might be like, kind of cool. But I would have probably just you know, just been a guy named Dave if he was around a little bit more. <laughs> That's yeah. how we had to throw a baseball. I would have just taken a dad. <laughs> just just a regular dad. I would have settled for a B-list celebrity that tossed the ball around with me a little bit. Yeah. Someone fucking low-key. Mm, man. Fucking shit. All right. Well, I guess the podcast is over. I don't know. I, That's I, it. I interjected with an anecdote. No, you're you're, doing, the leader. you're great. No, we're just hanging out, living life. All right. How old is he for real? Uh, 88-ish. Wow. 88. 88. Probably voted for Trump. He def- Clint Eastwood is definitely a I stand for the flag and kneel for the cross <laughs> kind of guy. How many kids? Eight. Oh yeah. I was just looking up the Ill- illegitimate child thingy. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll get to the bottom of it. You saw what? I saw something about him having eight kids, and I was like, "That we know of." <laughs> Even that's He's... a lot, though. Yeah, I mean, eight kids is. I mean, you've it's got not the fucking dust bowl. Like, yeah, you don't need eight kids Damn. anymore. Man. Eight. Eight. Clint Eight Eastwood. Children. Yeah. Just dunking in, fucking around. <laughs> did I did I author nine kids or only eight? You gotta ask yourself. <laughs> do I feel lucky, punk? Well, do you, oh fuck, I just came. <laughs> oh, I'm coming. <laughs> 
let me ask you a question. Oh, fuck! <laughs> I just came. I wonder what his face looks like when he comes. Yeah, uh, well, he's already very squinty-eyed to right. begin with. I mean, like, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's already like a... He kind of looks like he's coming all the time. <laughs> Uh, he could not keep his eyes wide open while he comes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, every... He looks like he's just about to yell at kids to get off of his grass constantly. Yeah, like, I mean, he made a that, movie based around that. Yeah, <laughs> Grant. I don't think... I, I have think a, he wrote Grant Torino because somebody got on his lawn and he wrote a whole <laughs> fucking movie about it. He was it. just fuming and fucking yeah. sat down and wrote a screenplay. He wrote that whole movie. I believe so, yeah. I don't, I haven't really seen any like of the old westerns that Clint Eastwood has been in. They're good. Maybe, I've seen like clips and shit from it, but Spaghetti I don't. Spaghetti westerns. Oh, okay. He, they coined the term. The, uh, he went to Italy and made them with Sergio. Don't know the last name. Doesn't matter. The whole point was a lot of them were in Italian and had to be dubbed. That was why they were called Spaghetti westerns, which that- is racist as fuck, but that's what they were called. <laughs> that is mind blowing. It is. We uh, had a character a few weeks ago on the podcast where I was just calling an Italian character Mr. Spaghetti Noodle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Come here, get over here, Mr. Spaghetti Noodle. Just so you telling me that is mind blowing because I had no idea that's why they were called Spaghetti Westerns. That's why. Sergio Garcia. Is that right? Because he made it with fucking. I don't know. I'm probably wrong. Italians. About that. Sergio Leone. Yeah, Randy spelled spaghetti S P A G H T E E. Spaghetti. <laughs> Mastacholi Westerns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mastacholi Westerns are the ones that they made at all your family reunions. <laughs> we literally talked about that last week on that podcast. Like a St. Louis style wedding is like Muscacholi's there. It's wedding Mastacholi. or a funeral. It's what? M O S T. Mus- some, muscacholi yeah. is just like a more white trash <laughs> way of saying it. We're having muscacholi at the... Yeah, it's made of musk. You know, we sprayed a little <laughs> bit of deer urine on it. It's very manly. It's a very masculine dish. Muscacholi. It's muscacholi. We're having it. Gather around. There's a funeral and a wedding. I'll muscacholi. Honest, I would fuck some muscacholi up right now. For real. <laughs> Man, you fucking love muscacholi. Well, I just grew up in a family of all boys, and like my mom had to make huge, cheap dishes to feed us all. So muscacholi was like a once a week. Food. Oh yeah, easy, dude. It's I just had like a pan of noodles for like nine dollars, and then she just throws some like watered down ragu in there, and, <laughs> and she some, puts the water yeah. in the fucking thing and shakes yeah. it around, pours that's, it in. That's how you made a pound of hamburger. Feed three giant boys that all weighed 250 pounds or more well i had your mom's a couple weeks ago when we went yeah. to visit your mom that what was that dish you were fucking hyped about it and i was kind of like ew this looks white trashy oh it's but white it trash hamburger fucking... helper it was like uh uh it, it's like cream of mushroom soup and uh-huh. cream cheese and hamburger in a casserole dish and then she puts like uh, pillsbury biscuits on top and bakes it in the oven i don't know what it's called Man, that shit was fucking good. It's just piece of shit. Like, <laughs> poor white trash. Yeah. When you can't afford Hamburger Helper, Hamburger Helper. Yeah. It was good, though, wasn't it? Oh, it was so fucking good. Yeah. I put ketchup on it. Like, I went all in. Uh, I was like, somebody give me some fucking ketchup. Mix it in. Yeah, that was like, it, it was Damn, perfect. I'm hungry as hell. Look at all that. Look at all this hamburger rice casserole. Man. I like how tater tots just weaseled their way into that fucking Google search. Well, <laughs> They just fucking they slipped just right in. They just popped their tie in like, hey, don't forget about us. Yeah, we're a fucking American food. I was, you know, when we were talking uh, last week about like weddings and funerals with muscacholi and all that shit, I was thinking of your grandfather's <laughs> funeral where we like yeah. had it, you know, in the the reception or the food gathering. Yeah, the funeral reception. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I, what is it called? The meal? The wake. Well, the wake is where you go. And see the person in the casket. Oh. I'm talking yeah. about when we ate afterwards. I I don't know. I don't know what it's called. After the funeral is what it's called. The funeral reception. We'll call it that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, I was just thinking about all the food that we had there. And there was some muscacholi. For sure. There was, there was fucking cheese. salad. There was just cheese. A lot of cheese. A lot of cheese. A lot of salad. If we would have truly been honoring my grandfather, there would have been some bagnacotta. 
which is yeah the grossest thing on earth if I describe it to you, but it tastes amazing and it's basically just butter and anchovies boiled down into a, uh, like a fondue with some other ingredients. It's a Sicilian dish and then you eat it on like fresh baked French bread or with boiled cabbage, which sounds disgusting. I know, but it's pretty amazing. It's really how, good. how do you eat it with it's boiled? It's stinky though. It will stink up your house. Oh, for, for sure. For a few days. Yeah. I mean, I'm on I'm surprised that you like that because it just sounds like there's way too it sounds like a recipe for heartburn. Yeah, no, I love it. Um you had it here, I'd eat it. How do you eat it with the cabbage? You dip it. You, you dip hold the, the cabbage? cabbage and you dip it. It'd be perfect for you. It's very caveman ish. <laughs> It'd be a perfect dish for you. Since that's like pretty much how you eat everything Just on the with planet my fucking little ch- it's like a cloth the fucking claw mm-hmm. machine that's exactly how i eat yep that's it's it you just dip it you dip it or you spread it sometimes it's thick enough to spread but you don't really spread it on cabbage you just kind of dip it it's and that's a, it just dunker. garlic and anchovies i mean there's more to it than that but that's the base that's what you taste yeah it's like a salty buttery fondue it's really good i'm into it i'll try it banyakata westerns i'm pro cabbage you know Igor and Svet are pro cabbage. They love it. That's mm-hmm. what Svet told us before we left and COVID was hitting. Before after we visited them, my mom was like, Tina, listen, country is going to shut down, okay? You need to go home and buy cabbage. Yeah. And I was like, Mom, you're being psycho. We're leaving. You guys need to stop fighting and we're getting out of here. And then listen, she was and your father and I will be fine. We've invested all of our four oh one K in cabbage stock. <laughs> Cabbage I don't bottom. think I don't think you're gonna get the the payoff you think, Svetlana, from this cabbage investment. She's like, no, 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 no. Trust me, soybeans are hot right now. Cabbage <laughs> will have its day. Cabbage <laughs> is going to make a comeback. She's like making fucking granola. She may be right. Yeah. Who knows? We're not out of the woods yet. Maybe it's never too late. To get into cabbage. Stock tip. Slop City stock tip. <laughs> Jim Cramer's Slop City stock tip. Get into cabbage. Get into cabbage. I'm buying cabbage. <laughs> hey, it's a Slop City stock tip. It's me, Jim Cramer. I'm here with your Slop City stock tip. Ooga. <laughs> Explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Buy cabbage. Cabbage. And then it shows like a red cabbage, a green cabbage. Fucking, I'm pro red cabbage over it, over green for sure. I'm not sure I know the difference. <laughs> you can do more with it. You can make mm-hmm. slaw. I mean, you can do everything with it. Okay. I just, I'm a cabbage girl. Oh. We have one in the fridge. Just waiting to be eaten. Waiting to be thrown away. Wait, <laughs> just waiting to be thrown <laughs> just away. Just waiting in our vegetable crisper, like all our other vegetables, to be thrown away at the end of a week. And then we have another heart to heart about how we're buying too much fresh produce because we're overestimating how healthy of a people we actually are. Yeah, I did have to throw <clears throat> some veggies away. Oh, I know. Do you see them in the trash I sometimes? I smell them. I smell them. <laughs> when we walk in the house. I smell them when I walk in the house, and I'm like, there's some vegetables that have been thrown in the trash today. Yeah, you did walk it. in the other day, and you were like, oh, what them. is that? <laughs> I might have known you, just, you took a shit, so. I took a mean shit earlier today, and you did not like it. It wasn't pleasant, no. You just walked in, and I sprayed Febreze afterwards. That's why I was kind of upset that you Cannibal smelled cabbage, it. Cannibal one. cabbage looks fun. Number one cabbage, green. Looks that like... ma- that makes sense. <clears throat> Number one. I'm not mad about it. I'm just saying I prefer the red cabbage. It's like onions. I like red onions over yellow. Red okay. are red are number one. Well, you took a stand. That's important. Uh huh. Buy red cabbage, motherfuckers. Yeah, but but in regards to my shit earlier, I was very upset because I sprayed Febreze Mm. after I shit. Now, I didn't spray it. For some reason, I sprayed it into the shower. (laughs) I don't know why. I opened the shower curtain after I took this big... (laughs) Did you shit in the tub? (laughs) (laughs) No. I I shit in the toilet. But I opened the shower curtain... And I sprayed it in there for some reason, and then I, then I closed the shower curtain. Okay, but I thought you wouldn't smell it, and uh, you did. I did from the living room. <laughs> I didn't have to leave my post 
to be aware of what your activities were in the other end of the house. Yeah, well. It happens. When you live together, that's what happens. You smell each other's poop sometimes. Yep. So (laughs) Randy Googled, why does poop smell bad? (laughs) It's a good question. I also, my dad used to come in. I used to hate this, man. Like we had one bathroom growing up, and my dad would always take a shit while I was in the shower. That is so mean. I don't know if it was a power move or like a Pavlov's dog thing, but like he'd come in and be like, just stay in there for a minute and drop like <laughs> a hot dad load, you know? And like the dad poops are some serious, that's a different smell. Oh, dude. That's how I knew I was getting older as I got off the toilet one day and I was like, <laughs> That smells like my dad's shit. And then I was like, I just took a dad shit. I'm like, when your shit starts to smell like your dad's shit when he used to get out of the bathroom, you realize your intestines have aged out. And you're just like, damn. Oh, my God. I got an old-ass colon. I got an old-ass colon. Man. I got a dad ass. <laughs> I love that he would make you fucking stay in there. He's like, just like, give me a minute. Yeah, and you think about like taking He's, like, and our bathroom was tiny, dude. Like your knees touched the tub <laughs> while bathrooms. you were shitting. Yeah, so like the tub was in front of you long ways, and your knees touched the tub, and the sink was right to your left, and that was our only bathroom for a family of five. And he'd be six foot four, so like his, his knees would be like pushing the shower curtain. <laughs> he in. puts his feet in the shower. I'd be in the shower, probably what? trying to have yeah. my jerk off time or J-O time at that yeah, point in my life. Off. Only privacy you had in the house. And he'd sit down, and I'd see like the shower curtain come in where his knees were at, and he'd be like, "Yeah, just wash a second time." And I'm like, and then he'd drop like a nasty dad shit, and it's like it's already gross. Yeah, but then you add the fact that you're basically in a four foot by four foot steam room with the shower going. And it's just steaming up that fucking dead skunk possum ass that your dad's dropping. It had just like, you know what it did? It had a dad shit smells like dreams unlived. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you get to that point where like, he knows he's not going to play in the NFL and you can smell it. You oh, can yeah. smell it in his shit somehow. He's like, whatever I'm doing, like, I'm oh, stuck in I, it. I took a job at the post office. Oh, 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 it's got good benefits, but it's monotonous day after day work. You know, Every like, day man. I go to this fucking house and this that, dog yeah, barks yeah, at and me. Like Your ass smells like you do government work. That's disgusting. Dude, I remember like roasting my dad one time when he took like a stinky shit. My dad like got mad. He's like. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> he was like, he was like hurt almost. Like he was like, I don't know. I took a shit. What do you mean it stinks? And I'm like, ew, dude, it stinks. And like we're all roasting him. And he was just like got mad and like went upstairs and <laughs> tucked in for the night. <laughs> I can't remember what did we roast my dad? Oh, we roasted my dad. For smelling like he sweat before we left to go oh, to the yeah. airport. We were in D.C. Her got- dad wouldn't go to the airport because he stunk. He had, <laughs> went on like a bike ride. He smelled like B.O. And they started roasting him for it. And he's like, he's fine. I just wouldn't let go. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. And he came in and I was like, what's the matter, man? And he's just like, I'm not going to go. They're saying some things about body odor. And I'm like, yeah, you fucking stink like a goat bro like yeah, he went on an 18 mile bike ride this morning take a shower he got a shower i mean it's just he got his feelings hurt though he, he did he got his feelings hurt he he got, got him got roasted there were some igor tears shed when we pulled out <laughs> oh my god he probably like stood at the balcony and just like <laughs> tears streaming down his face <laughs> just smelling like a straight up onion <laughs> he did smell like onion dude he was uh, real uh, rank <laughs> Oh, man. I don't know. I don't think I, I do. Women have like a, a dad shit moment or no, is but just... there is a mom smell. There's a mom's been in the bathroom smell, too. Yeah. It's a different smell. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like a, a like some pH balance is off. That's do you what know I was going to say. Saying? Do you think it's like mixed with kind of like some stinky, stinky pussy? It can be. It can be. I just think that like, yeah, mom's sad shits are different than dad's sad shits or broken dreams. Mom's sad shits are just like, you know, the stress of raising a family comes out of their butt somehow. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's not always. Mm-hmm. Moms get away. Mom's got a lot cleaner release, I think. They get, they take those ghost shits where you're like, has my mom pooped this week? I'm not sure. Yeah. But then you, then when you do catch it, it's... 
It's fucking it's something. I don't think I've ever, ever, like, I don't ever remember my mom pooping when I was younger. Your mom? Yeah. Your mom's so thin and focused on her health that she may not shit. Like, she just. I think she may be like an owl and she just, like, throws up a pellet once a day <laughs> of the things her body can't digest. It's like. <laughs> and it's just like. <laughs> and then, like, a little string bean comes out of your mom and she just. Flushes the toilet lightly. She just composts it. <laughs> yeah. Everything she, yeah, all of her fucking shit is just a Mom, little. She's like, oh, I'm so full. I had three raisins today. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, cool. The worst is when she'll tell me things like, Tina, this clothes doesn't fit me anymore. It's way too big. You can have this. I'm like, awesome. And then it still doesn't fit. Yeah. And then I try to put it on and break it. We weren't, we weren't all growing up uh, three miles from Chernobyl, okay, Svetlana? Right. The reason you're skinny is because you're fucking radioactive. <laughs> yeah, dude, because you had to eat a charcoal tablet or whatever the fuck <laughs> they made you do. She ate a fucking uh, briquette every yeah, day. Yeah, she ate a little char- uh, we fucking tried to, we tried Kingsman. To, yeah, What's the brand? Kingsman, yeah. <laughs> we went to the Smoky Mountains. I tried to grill out, and I caught her mom trying to eat the charcoal out of the bag. <laughs> I was like, sit, sit. I had to spray her with a bottle, and she's like, <laughs> Yeah, she's Obviously. just fucking eating the charcoal briquette, numbing it down. That's why I can't smell her poop. Yeah. It's all it's fucking just... been tamped down with charcoal dust. Man, fucking now shit. Now we know. Now we know, Svet. <laughs> her <laughs> little owl pellet. <laughs> I I mean, I truly am wondering if she poops. I know that if we ask her, she, obviously she does because yeah. she's alive. But <clears throat> I would imagine like... <clears throat> Because they're vegan now. And it's uh-huh. like, we, uh, one of our friends, Melanie mm-hmm. Penn, she is vegan and like she's got a healthy, healthy stream of farts and yeah. poops. I'm not going to out anybody on, I'm not going to out anyone on the podcast for their healthy farts and poops by name. Oh, you're if, not? If not family members, no, I'm, I'm better than that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Should we edit that out? No, I'm just kidding. I don't care what you do. Well, um, Either way, I'm yeah. saying she's got a healthy, she got a healthy yep. toot, toot cycle. Mm-hmm. And I just, I don't think I've ever heard my mom toot. You know, there's never been a moment where I've like, she's accidentally tooted or anything. So are you looking up charcoal? Like why people eat it? Cause I'm kind of curious about that. I did. Um, is it just because it soaks up? Cause they use it for drug overdoses too. Oh, they do. Mm-hmm. So it's used what, for. Just- Intestinal gas, high cholesterol, hangovers, upset stomach, bile flow problems. Yeah. During pregnancy and uh, for poisoning. Poisoning, yeah. It's crazy. So, like, <coughs> if you drink some bleach or something, <laughs> inject Lysol into yourself. Or I don't anything. know if it will overcome bleach, but I do know. I just, I always assumed it had some sort of like property where it. Kind of like when the bus, someone puked on the bus and the bus driver had to put sawdust over it. <laughs> I just assumed that was like what charcoal does in your stomach. You're okay. like, oh, I got a bunch of shit here. No one, I don't want anyone to step in it. And they just, charcoal is the sawdust of your belly. It just soaks everything up right quick. Yeah. You get some fucking piss on the ground. You accidentally shit in the tub. Accidentally shit somewhere. You well, just we're just not going to get off shit today, are we? Toss down some, uh, this is the one hour Slop City shit spectacular. <laughs> oh, Jim I mean, Kramer here with your Slop City stock tip. <laughs> Buy shit. <laughs> no, we're not going to because we also have to talk about a lot of people want to know mm-hmm. about the shit story. I saw, so, I saw, I saw. I didn't see all the comments for questions. I don't know. If we're questions not. Came unfortunately, in. we're not going to get it's off really gross the shit episode. today. That's why I was thinking about. I'm like, we should probably talk about something for five more minutes before we really dive in. We can, why well we can talk about UFOs for a little bit and then we'll dive into the shit story. U- 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 UFO. Cuz I know Randy is losing his mind right now with all of this UFO shit. When Are you freaking out or what I've Randy? I've been watching that's a funny open. this show. Uh-huh. Hangar 1 the UFO files this shitty history channel UFO yeah. thingy and it's terrible but I keep watching it. Can't stop. No, I can't stop. You're just watching it over and over again? Here's my no, theory. I keep falling asleep and have to back up and watch. <laughs> That's like me. From where I night. last remember seeing and then start over. I talked to Tina and I told her my theory on the grays and the UFOs 
are that they're time travelers. Yeah, dude. I think that's why they appear. I think that's. I think that's why they appear over uh, deserts and open places. Is that people are aware of like if we're gonna, you know, they don't ever crash in someone's like metropolitan area. It's always like out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, that's because they know in the future that nothing was here at this time. And if we're gonna attempt time travel, we need a wide open space. And that's why they appear over. Uh, the ocean, Southern California, places they know that they won't crash into a building when they come through a time portal. And that's the reason they have to be kept under wraps, under government control, because butterfly effect. The more people they interact with, the more chance they change the future. They never have time travel. We don't get technology from the future. We're caught in an infinite time loop where we're using technology that hasn't been invented yet, but is being invented now. And if we break that loop, then we all lose our cell phones. And that's fucked up. Then we all lose our cell phones. I am so scared of the time travel part. Like, I'm fine with there being aliens and stuff. You know, yeah, Yeah, I really am. Like, when there was all the Area 51 shit, you know, remember when we were going to go make some money and um, go to Area 51 and, you know, have a shit bucket so people could shit out there and everything, have a fucking beverage stand? Well, UFO sightings map. Randy, did you see that recent news news though? Like that there's they have confirmed that there are like what planes or some method of transportation that is not of this earth. Did you see that shit? Sort no. of just recently? Bruh, it happened the other day. I can't believe you haven't seen this. No, I'm pretty <coughs> tapped out of the news. I man. know. You're trying out. to they, not uh, do that. the Pentagon's gonna to release some papers uh about possible crafts tick the tic tac crafts like you're looking at right there the tic tac shaped ones that move uh they said they were someone that worked on them said that they there were materials not of this world yeah that's fu- i mean that's fucking crazy and the crazy. government finally didn't oh. deny it they said that uh they're going to release some papers but i don't know they've been retconning some stuff this week too where you see like them being like oh yeah china and the u.s are working on ufo shaped military vehicles they both are working on this technology so that's what it was and i'm like oh we'll see <laughs> i mean there's just there just has to be moscovium aliens yeah that's fun is that, that that's what i'm made of i'm made of moscovium <laughs> moscacholi yeah i'm made of mos- <laughs> that's, that's what na- moscacholi is made named of. after moscacholi <laughs> the main ingredient in moscacholi is moscovium which is uh, the atomic number one one five? So um, Moscovid nineteen, <laughs> Moscow COVID nineteen, <laughs> Moscovid nineteen. <laughs> I blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, fuck, man. So yeah, that's that. What are what is Mos- Moscovium, <clears throat> Randy? Why are you looking that up? Because I heard there was a, a a new element in one of my. Stupid fucking shows that I was watching that is supposed to be alien technology. This alien race gave us this element, and I'm trying to find out what it, I don't remember what Tupperware. it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, not like the shitty, flimsy Tupperware. Right. We're talking like the hard Tupperware. Like Rubbermaid, the best one, the stackable lids. That shit's fucking good. Yeah, I think I saw you. Know, uh, and I saw Joe Rogan posted on Instagram something about it too. That guy that uh, was mm. talking about that element back in like '89, and people were what Bob Lazar? Him. Maybe Bob Lazar's been talking about it for a while. You can check Bob Lazar. They got a whole Netflix special on him. Well, yeah, and everyone that. thinks he's crazy. Well, and, he's getting vindicated. Yeah, that dude. Yeah. Well, and I he's mean, getting vindicated. Yeah, him. A lot of people just think he's fucking nuts. He saw the grays. Grey's Anatomy. I think, <laughs> what is the Greys? The Greys are the aliens that are like. Uh, the ones that are like neat. Well, they're supposed to be like almond three eyes? different almond eyes, yeah. Almond eyes. Mm-hmm. Ever looked at you? That's it. Those are the Greys. Yeah, the almond eyes. I have. I don't uh, like that they just call them the Greys. That's what they're called. They're, there's three different kinds. There's the grays, and then there's like, uh, uh, what are the other ones, Randy? There's the little green ones, right? And then the ashy ones. Yeah, and then Ashy Larry. <laughs> 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 uh, 
and then Ashy Larry the Ashy alien. Larry. He just came by himself and he tried to borrow fifteen bucks. <laughs> He's he just kept trying to borrow fifteen bucks from <laughs> the FBI. He's like, hey, does anybody? The Grays have- are supposed to be the ones that are of the higher intelligence that cooperated. They, they, that was the crash site. Area fifty one was all built around the Grays, and that they've they're they've entered into an agreement to use this as a the Earth as a. Uh, Universal pit stop, for lack of a better word. Uh, Universal piss stop. Piss stop, yeah. They just, <laughs> they come, just, all, they just come and pee it's out a truck of their stop. fingers. It's just a bunch of aliens just blow each other in the <laughs> middle of the Nevada desert. And then yeah. they go on about their universal trucking routes. Yeah, they got like lot, lot lizards, yeah. but they're like lot grays. Yeah, all their spaceships have mud flaps with like a naked women's silhouette. <laughs> yeah. Sitting on it. That's what I'm talking about. A silhouette of like someone yeah. blowing someone. Yep. I like. Um. Yeah. Okay. So these these are the almond eyes. I love it. Almond eyes. They kind of look like I had. I have sleep paralysis. Oh, you, you and got... I have talked about that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um. When I was in L.A., I was alone, and I've heard that a lot of alien abduction dreams and stuff like that come from uh, sleep paralysis because you like freak. When you have sleep paralysis, you wake up and your body can't move. You're in a state of panic. You have shallow breathing because you want to move, and it feels like your body's paralyzed. It's very frightening. It happens to me quite often. Yeah. And uh, you... That guy looks like Julian. A lot of times you <laughs> think somebody has, like, broken... I always think someone's in the house or someone's in the room, and a lot of times that manifests. Like, you fall back asleep, and then you dream. Like, there's a lot of alien abductions. It's that they're at the foot of your bed. A lot of people are like, oh, they abducted me while I was in bed, and they say that sleep paralysis is part... And I was always like, well, I don't ever see that i don't ever see an alien i always just think someone's in the house and but when i was in la i had it it was the first time it ever happened to me i had it really bad and i was on like a airbnb that had a, like a twin bed with rollers on it and i'd rolled myself away from the walls tossing and turning <laughs> so i was like in the middle of the room it was very disorienting and i couldn't move and i saw like a being in the doorway that kind of looked like groot from Aww, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, but not yeah. cute Groot. Like, it wasn't. He, it was just weird. He, his head did like almost looked like it was on fire. Okay. Uh, but he had big almond eyes, kind of like the aliens. Uh huh. And he was standing. Uh, yeah, kind of like that. He was kinda standing like a, there. He was standing there like this. <clears throat> oh, I love that photo of Groot where he's just like this. No, he, he was not doing. He that. was a scary Groot. It not was, well. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, it was terrifying and. He, like, the thing put its hand out like that, and in the palm of its hand, it was like a blue light. It was almost like an iridescent oh, wow. blue. Like, I could see, but it was under the skin. And, bro, I was so fucking scared. I was in L.A., in an Airbnb, waiting for uh, one of my teammates to, like, join me the next day. And I just, it was like 3 a.m., and I was up. When I finally could, because it takes you a while, you're kind of like, a, <laughs> <laughs> it was like your whole body has Novocaine. And when I finally could get my fat ass moving, I was just like, I got up and I watched like Telemundo until six o'clock in the morning. It's only happened to me a couple of times, but it is fucking scary. It's freaky. it's freaky deaky. It is like, I don't know. Maybe you were, maybe an alien came and visited Jim you. Kramer, Slop City Stock Tip. <laughs> Sell sleep paralysis. Oh, man. Oh, God. That's fucking scary. You know, I think trippy. I think you had sleep paralysis this morning because you were, I was getting ready no, to- No, I know when I have it. Okay, well, I'm going to show you what you did this morning. I, I was waiting to tell you today on the podcast. I what? laughed so fucking hard. <laughs> I laughed so hard. So this is like <laughs> 9, probably like 9.15 in the morning. And we don't have a headboard. Like, we just sleep. It's like we're on this like high bed frame. It's got like drawers under it and shit, you know, and it's like we just got pillows against the wall. And Rafe was sleeping and your hand was like this above your head. And it was like this one was by the pillow and you were sleeping. And all of a sudden you were like, oh, and then you did this with your fingers. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's not sleep paralysis. That's sleep. <laughs> Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Dude, I was like, are you fingering someone? Remember how we were roasting our buddy Steve for like 
jerk it or like blowing yeah. somebody in their sleep. You were literally your hand was it was like uh, a night. Yes, literally, exactly like that. Oh my god, it was damn. so fucking funny. Well, thanks for not waking me up. Whatever I was doing, I bet it was cool. No, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you're probably fingering someone. Well, it sounded like I was fucking and fingering someone because if I was going uh, and like uh, I don't normally, I don't think I've ever fingered anyone and been like uh. <laughs> That'd be weird if, like, you're like oh, if the guy's oh, like, oh, my, it feels so fucking good on my fingers, babe. Oh, my God. Oh, oh fuck. Can I, oh, my God. Let me get my ring finger in there. Oh, my God. Oh, it's the most sensitive one. Yeah. Like, if you were with a dude. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. I thought he really liked rubbing my clit, but he has the most sensitive index finger in the world. Uh, E.T. Back to Gray's. That ET's little oh. glowy finger sensitive. Oh, for sure. He that puts, thing's he puts that on your bean. You're gonna calm your brains yeah. out. I think ET is asexual for sure. Don't you? I don't know. I mean, he had long, dex- dexterous fingers. Look yeah, at that. He's... If he put that on your pussy, lights out, dude. He would either do one of two things. It would either cauterize your vagina. Yeah. If it was hot, it looks kind of hot, but I don't think it was hot. He touched that kid's finger and no one got upset. Yeah, no one no one was upset at all. Oh, God, look at him in the little basket. It's so cute. I feel like they kind of modeled Groot after mm-hmm. E.T. Yeah. That's, Just a now, little if bit. that alien was real, pff, that's cute as hell. It's fucking adorable, and he's in the little basket just mm-hmm. like a little baby. Oh, man. He truly is adorable. Elliot. Elliot. Oh, God, what a cute little potato. Little baby, Randy. Little baby Drew Barrymore in that movie. She's a little cutie patoot, little baby. I started following her on Instagram recently, and um, it's been fun. Really? It sounded sarcastic. I mean, it kind of is, but it was like, there was a, like a <clears throat> photo Adam Sandler put up on his Instagram, and it was like, oh, you know, like... A picture of him and his wife and Drew Barrymore commented on on it and was like, oh, my God, I love you guys so much and your girls, blah, blah. And then I was like, holy fuck, they've been together in a lot of movies. Like they had 50 First Dates, The Wedding Singer, which is arguably one of the greatest movies ever, mm. Um, I think. That's pretty good. Yeah. I just got excited. She like, seems I was like, like a person who survived childhood stardom pretty well. I mean, yeah. she's. Had her moments in history where she was a little odd, but. Yeah, she seems like she's got it together. She seems just kind of like a I normal mean, person. She's like been a successful adult, which is hard. Yeah. Most child stars don't make the leap, so that's. No, a lot of them end up like. Jim Cramer, Slop City Stock Tip. Buy Drew Barry for <laughs> Jim Cramer. Oh, my God. Child stars that went crazy. It's, Plus, it's almost all of them, dude. Oh, for sure. They're all just struggling. It's almost all of them. It's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. Like, Britney Spears, man, all that Britney Spears shit is just fucking up my brain. Poor Britney. Hannah Montana, she's fine. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf, you know, he's fine. He went through a weird phase, but well, he's come out of it. He's yeah. come out of it. Screech. Dust, Screech, I mean, I heard he's a fucking lunatic. Yeah, he's a maniac. Did any of you guys ever open for him or know anybody that uh, has I, opened for him? I do know. I saw a situation or caught wind of a Screech situation, and it was pretty wild, man. At Hey Guys, in fact, I think. <laughs> I Have thought, you opened for him? No. I thought that's where it was. Was it Hey Guys? Yeah, the story, as the lore goes, was that he was coked out, drunk, Came out in the lobby, started making a bunch of noise with his friends. The owner was like, hey, could, Dustin, could you go back in the green room? And Because uh, the feature's on stage, and it's kind of disruptive. And he goes, oh, yeah? And he went on stage and took the mic away from the feature, told him, you're done. Really? And started bombing hard in, like, the first five minutes. And the audience didn't like him, and he took his shirt off and tried to fight a guy in the front row. And then they had to. Oh my god! Refund all the tickets, and then he was in the parking lot trying to score coke from <laughs> people in the audience that he just made walk out. And that this was about the time he was going to jail for for stabbing somebody. It was when he was at a real low point. 
That he is... might be a super cool dude now. I don't know. Sure, but that's also just like... <clears throat> and that's also, uh, you know, a secondhand story I got, so I could be spreading complete gossip and lies. And you know what? <clears throat> I'm sorry, Dustin Diamond, if now that's true. Yeah, Screech, we're sorry. <sighs> I was trying to look it up to see but who that would be. Was. That would be like a special kind of fuck, because I was talking to someone about that, and I'm like, dude, that guy walks down the street, and people just yell Screech at him. Sure. Like when your character is so wildly pop, because that happens to a lot of people, like they become the, um, the in their own world character on sitcoms and shit. Fonzie, Kramer, Screech. Yeah. They become so popular. They're usually the breakout star of that show. But then when that show ends, they can't do anything else because no one can see them. As anything but that character. Like Kramer's Kramer, Screech is Screech, Sheldon, Sheldon. I'm I'm happy to see that guy getting some work on Netflix because I'm like, Sheldon, it might be rough when Big Bang Theory ends. Like, you've kind of become this, like, monumental, iconic T-shirt. Steve Urkel? When's the last time you saw Steve Urkel oh, yeah. on something? No, Like, never. all those big characters from sitcoms, that's a hard thing to break out of. Yeah. You know, be tough. I- yeah, I feel like it's a, a little easier now because there's so many, like, like for Sheldon, it's like that was a more recent yeah. sitcom and shit. Like, I feel like those old ones, though. I think like, at social media, probably. Yeah. You get to, like, be yourself on Instagram and stuff so you don't get. People get to see you as something yeah. other than that. And they get to, like, keep up with you and be like, oh, my God, they're in a new thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man fucking screech that's hilarious i can't remember who else someone else uh, it doesn't fucking matter just like to if i ripped my shirt off on stage and got in a fight with somebody it'd be way funnier because your tits would be flopping all about oh it. yeah they'd be like are those east west titties <laughs> those nipples look like a racer you can't tell who you're looking at who do you want to fight the people who your one tits <laughs> looking over here yeah. The other tits pointing over there. You can't find us all. Yeah, what's going on? They're like, they're big, but like there's not a lot of cleavage because they just sit off to the side. Yeah. <laughs> that guy looks cool. Randy, when you looked up sleep paralysis, the guy in the fucking Wiki How article looks like Julian from Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> Did you see him, Rafe? Uh, I can kind of see him a little bit, yeah. Looks exactly like him. He looks like Edward Norton from my angle, but. It's yeah. Probably more Julian. Looks like he's jerking off in bed. <laughs> and, uh, Who jerks oh off with a sheet that tight? <laughs> that guy. I like he's... to be pinned down when I do it. It's like vacuum porn, all that oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, I'm out God. That. I hate that. I could never. If you ever tried to, like, just have me claustrophobic, like, you know, like put me in the vacuum and or put the sheets all over me and wrap me around it and stuff. I would have a fucking meltdown. There's yeah. no way. I would also be a very weird guy if I just did that to you. Yeah, for sure. Like without asking. Yeah. Like, You're like, hey, all right. Just roll with it. I'm going to turn you into a human burrito, and then I'm going to fuck you. Yeah, you're like, all right, I got six Ziploc vacuum bags that are meant for clothing packing across the country. You should uh, yeah. And here's the Dyson. I'm going to suck the air out of it, put a hole by your clit, That's right. and I'm going to suck your clit, and I'm going to just be stuck there? No. I like up. to squiggle around, you know? Mm. I like to move around if I have to. Yeah, you're pretty open-minded. I'm okay with that. She's pretty open-minded. She I... demanded we went to uh, <laughs> we went to a friend's wedding uh, last week. Uh huh. What? I just can't wait for Libby to hear this story. We went to a friend's wedding, Zach Jehoviak, shout out, founder of Flyover Fest. It was nice, socially distanced wedding, very responsible. Uh, they had rescheduled several times and they got married at Bell Reeve Golf Course uh, in Clayton, Missouri. And we went uh, to, and we had a good time and socially distanced. We each got our own private sanitized golf cart. We went out to the socially distanced wedding site, you know, out on a, I don't know, Tea that had the American flag flying high above it. It was a very patriotic wedding. I'm not. I didn't know it was a very big American flag just flying in the backdrop. I was a bit <clears> upset <throat> we didn't sing the national anthem before I, I, yeah. the ceremony. I was, I was not upset. Courtney uh, Tharp, now Jehoviak, looked beautiful. It was a very wonderful ceremony. They did a socially distanced Viking seven course dinner. Uh, big long table. Everybody six feet apart. 
Bobby J. Cox, Bobby the Bone Man went Bobby with the his Bone girlfriend. Man. They were sitting seven feet across from us at a table. And over a seven-course dinner, Tina got progressively drunker and drunker uh-huh. and demanded that we fuck on this golf course. Uh-huh. Which, it's hard for me as a guy to say no. I was trying. I would. I kept denying the fuck. And I was like, we've only run the third course of the meal. We can't just walk out on this seven course yeah, meal. Yeah, because we needed the to have the full meal. <laughs> and she just kept pounding the wine. It's hot, dude. It's so hot. It's like 92, 93 degrees. I'm mm-hmm. in a suit. I'm a big guy. She's sweating her ass off. People, women's makeup are running all over the place. <laughs> it was just a hot day. It was an outdoor wedding, outdoor receptions on in July 25th. Uh-huh. It was hot. She wouldn't drop it. The drunker she got, the more she's like, I don't see what your problem is. You just, I'm trying to fuck. You don't want to fuck? And she's like saying it. She's like calling me out in front of Bobby and Danielle. And I'm like, I saw that I don't want to fuck. It's like, it's hot. And why are you, what is the deal? You just want to get fucked on a golf course? Like what's happening? But eventually I was like, my manhood was tested. And I was like, fine, let's go. Let's just go fuck on this golf course. And we went and found a gazebo. The first gazebo we passed. First stop. We didn't go far. Yeah. And we had sex near a trash can. <laughs> uh, and it was just so hot. You know when it's yeah, so it hot, you're not even hot. sure. I'm like, I don't know if that's, I don't know what, I don't know where this wetness is from. <laughs> I don't know if it's, from, I don't know if it's from sweat or charisma. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but. <laughs> I got it in there, and uh, I was so hot that I put my suit back on. We had to walk back uphill, and I was like, oh, man, I feel ill. (laughs) She just demanded to fuck at a gazebo. Let me tell you something. Fellas, a little dating advice. Your lady demands to be fucked in a gazebo. You fuck her in a gazebo. If she smokes, she fucks, boys. And she yeah. was smoking that night. <laughs> if she smokes, she fucks. She smoked a whole pack of American spirits. Uh, 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 uh. And then we had sloppy, sweaty sex in a gazebo at Belle Reeve. So if you work at Belle Reeve and you follow the podcast, clean up on aisle four. <laughs> <laughs> clean up on aisle four. There is sweat and lots of cum. So get on over there. Bobby and Danielle went for a walk and he was like, and we walked across the fairway, and I saw the gazebo, and Danielle's like, you think they're fucking in there? And he goes, what do you think? Do you think <laughs> Rafe and Tina walked four miles to fuck? Or to the, whole or mine? Or walked past the first <laughs> uh, weight-bearing structure they could find and just started fucking immediately? And I was like, man, he knows us. He knows us real well. He knows us too well. But he tried to roast us. He said he heard, like, Forrest Gump. Yeah, he, like, we he walking, did he try to do here, that. Like, e, 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 e. And I was like, hey, come on. There's nobody making those kinds of I, I didn't pay attention to it when he said that the other day because I was like, yeah. no, we didn't. But he was like trying to insinuate that you were, like you just said, making Forrest whoa, whoa, Gump whoa, whoa. noises. Why is it me in this scenario? I like that he just said he heard a noise that sounded like, eh, 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 and you just assumed. That he was talking about me. Why would it be me? When have I ever made any kind of ink? But he ink, doesn't know ink. that. When have I ever done it? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I would just think that it would... A grunting like that is going to come from a man. Or from someone getting pounded super hard. <laughs> uh, trying to, like, not pass out from the heat. Okay. I guess it could have been me. Or he lied. He He was probably just trying to do a fun bit. He was. Or not. Who or, fucking who knows? knows? You were pretty drunk. You were pretty drunk. Very emotional. Cried afterwards. We had to wait to go back up. She was. It was a good cry. Uh, I feel like we're being vulnerable right now. But, yeah, uh, really getting into it. She had a good cry afterwards, and I was. And she's like, "Let's go back up to the reception." And I'm like, "We can't just walk out of the wild <laughs> after we disappeared for thirty minutes or however long we've been gone with tears streaming down your face." Everyone's going to assume I am a horrible human being. She's like, I'm just so happy and I love you and we're in this moment together. And I was like, well, let's just be in this moment together until you get your shit together. You want, you're yeah. drunk. You need to calm crying. down. I can't just emerge from the fucking wilderness with a crying woman and be uh, like, you guys ready to party? 
Oh, man. There was just something so cool about fucking on a fucking rich-ass yeah. golf course. I thought like it was in an 80s movie. Like, fuck the rich kids. We're going to bang on their golf course. Eat the rich. <laughs> but then it's like also exactly what everyone thinks we We were exactly who everyone thinks we are. Yeah. There was part of me that's like, yeah. The reason you that we may have gotten crossed off the guest list we lived right up to it. Yeah, they were like, I don't know, man. They might like. They get kind of wild. Chances are Rafe's going to try and fuck her on that golf course. Yeah. And it's like, no, they're, no one would do that. That's a ridiculous thing, Zach. <laughs> we're going to invite them. And Zach's like, I don't know. I'm telling you. They think they might just fuck right there and probably not even walk that far away. Like Zach. within earshot of our reception, they're going to have sex by the bocce ball courts. And I'm like, <laughs> and Courtney's like, no, they're good people. And then what did we do? And Zach's like, oh, they're going to ask for seconds too, like on plates. Like mm-hmm. it's just, they're. You we can't I do was it. mad that people left those steaks Me next too, to us. but at least Ken, the bartender, was able to take it because I literally, I was like, you're gonna, take, <laughs> you, I was like, you're gonna take that, right? He goes, fuck yeah, and he grabbed those yeah. two fucking steaks and he got the fuck out of there. Oh, I love it. All right, we're coming up on an hour, so we need to okay. at least answer one. We need what we need is you're leading this. Yeah, I'm not. Give it to me. I'm f- I'm just fucking guiding guiding the sheep. Guiding light. Guiding the sheeple. What are you uh, laughing at, Randy? Uh, I'm just I keep scrolling through here hole by hole to see if I can find, find the gazebo. <laughs> the gazebo. Uh, it, it was the 19th hole. So but- I, get, I don't know. I'll just say. Oh my <laughs> god! Did you play the back nine? Uh, I love. Look, it was not far away. There's a white, really it's wasn't. a white gazebo mm-hmm. at Bell Reeve. Yep. Um, it was right up by... Yeah, just type in Gazebo, Bell Reef. Their PGA Tour happened there. Can you understand? I mean, can you guys believe that? We we fucked fucked somewhere that the PGA... Tiger Woods probably, like, leaned up against that at some point. God damn, that's fucking awesome. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, but so we need to... um, You're you're so hyped about it. I I love it. I think it's a really nice memory that we are going to be able to tell your granddaughter someday. Yes. And I mean, it's just going to be. I can't wait to sit her down and be like, listen, there's three things you need to know in life. Everybody deserves a second chance. You can be anything you want to be. Healthcare is a fundamental right. If you get a chance to fuck on a golf course, you take it. (laughs) Well, I can't wait to tell her. You know, it's just going to be a really good story. Well, wait till she's six. (laughs) Uh, so we have a couple questions. Number one, uh, somebody asked about they they would really like you to explain the grandfather thing, and what I was thinking, it, and what they mean by that is like they're like, how the fuck is he a grandpa? Okay, but I was thinking that we can refer them to your album um, and listen to it there, or you can tell the story if you want. Uh, so explain the grandfather thing. That's what I mean. Yeah, That's- someone's just confused. They're like, what the fuck? He's a grandpa? This is here, a longtime friend of the podcast. Here to deal. Who is it? Uh, Katie Leto. Katie Leto. Here it is. I'm going to give you the abridged version. You I'm going to give name. you the quick version. I became a father when I was 19 years old, and uh, I, I had a son, and then he became a teenager, and he impregnated a girl when he was 15. Despite my best efforts to teach him to wear a condom. And, uh, yeah, play that bit. I give you the rights to that if you want to. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, only available on Ooh, like you got to be streaming. Well, Katie, yeah. You One can... view, that's sad. Um, so that's it. Uh, so that I was uh, I was 36 years old when I found out I was a grandfather. Yeah. And um, that's how we do it. So my family likes to... We like to fuck and make people early and then uh, get on with our lives, I guess. Yeah, you just get on. Get you on just with it. Start, start your life. Get well, and it. you found out you were a grandpa pretty or Like, it was like right when we were becoming like friends, kind of starting to talk, I think. Yeah, I, I knew for a while, I think. Before, oh. But I mean, not a long while. Probably Okay. half a year, six months to a year. Okay. When you started coming on the scene. When I started lurking around. You started lurking in the shadows. For that grandpa dingus. Yeah. Trying to get that fucking pappy dingus. <laughs> pappy. Who the pappy? Come here, pappy. Um, okay, so. What else we got? 
<laughs> Someone said, my question for you both is if you know anything about setting up bidets and have any tips. I uh, want my booty hole clean as a whistle, but I am not good with plumbing. Um, Man, unfortunately, I don't know a lot about setting up a bidet. I feel like Randy's better at that. He knows more about plumbing. I actually set one up for uh, somebody that helps us with the podcast and the video angles once in a while. I went and set up a bidet on the toilet. Okay. It's quite easy, actually. You just take the seat off, put the other the bidet seat on, okay. and then you unplug the hose and screw the bidet in, and blam, there you go. Good day, mate. Blam. Good day, mate. You hey, bidet, mate. <laughs> That's not a knife. We spray our assholes off here in Australia. Australia, just get your fucking bee hole cleaned out. But listen, babe. So okay, the biggest thing that uh, people I... would really like to know. Is, yeah, I, have no, uh, I have no bidet information, so yeah, no, no, no. Um, baby wipes, yeah, repeat. baby wipes, baby. That's wi- what I say. Get a baby wipe, wipe your butthole out. You get lost in the bush, you die like a good Australian. You don't ask for help for God or Jesus Christ. <laughs> you just die. You just die. Uh, <laughs> so, um, people want to know the finger blast story from Rafe's point of view. Finger so blast. if he is willing to share, of course. And then somebody wrote, how oh. about from Rafe's POV when Tina shit in his hand? Is that, that's the same story, right? Yeah, it is. But yeah. I just like that multiple people and someone else commented like, yeah, we definitely need to unpack the shit in the hand story. So uh, the people want to know, and I bet I'm going to be embarrassed, and uh, I don't really get embarrassed. It is difficult for me, but this is a time I was Well, I mean, you've shared, you've made this bed. You've shared this story, right? I have. People have knowledge of it because you told it. Not yes. Because, so how, how are you, you going to get embarrassed if I talk about it? I won't if it's no, going to no, embarrass I'm you. not saying that. I'm just, it's, I, I, when I told this story on here, I just farted. I'm really sorry. It might stink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um when I told the story on here, I talked about how, like, embarrassing it was for me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it should have been. It, it should have been embarrassing. Um, yeah, so we were not far into fooling about as a couple. Round two. Uh, round two? Oh, never mind. You, you're you not. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to let you talk. No, what's round two? Because it was when I when I dookied in your hand. It was, <laughs> it was round two that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just okay. meant in our relationship. Sure, sure, sure. We, we were had like, not been. This isn't something that happened four years in. No, this Couple happened months. in like the two month mark. Yeah, we'd been fooling around, and you know when you first start dating somebody, kids. <laughs> you know when you first start dating someone and you fuck a lot, like more than you need to, and you don't realize that you're using up those fuck cards, and then you get further into the relationship, and then you don't fuck nearly enough. Right. We were at that point. We were at that point where we were doing. I was getting my fuck coupons, and I was I was I was out of control, cashing them in out every day. Blah, 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 blah. So it was probably yeah. There was a lot of banging going on. Uh, there might have been some mild secretive cocaine use on her end. I'm not sure if that was happening at that time. Oh yeah, for sure. So not that probably didn't, probably didn't help uh, the diuretic situation. Uh. Uh, oh, and it was, we we're true. fooling around, we're kissing and hugging and squeezing and fingering and, you know, doing all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you get a little wild when you're first with someone, you're testing the boundaries. How, what, what positions do we like? What are we into? And I, we got into some, some heavy petting and, uh, uh, in the nude, in the dark. And, uh, we were fucking, we were fucking. And, uh, uh, she was, she was, she was, I don't know how graphic you want me to be, but oh, I'm just, just going to tell the it. truth. I, she I was, told everyone did. Wasn't I, I pretty uh, graphic when I told this Randy? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Cool. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. That's how we fuck here in Australia. <laughs> absolutely. So, so, uh, 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 I, I, I was, I was, I bent her over to the bed. And was getting that good finger blast from behind. You know that move where you're like, you're like <laughs> kissing a woman's shoulders and you're kind of, you're in there and you got your two middle fingers because that's, this is the move. It's never, you, you don't want these two. This is weak sauce. You, want, you got these two fingers wrapped around her pelvic bone Whoa. for like that. And your thumb is like near her asshole, but not on it. 
maybe putting a little bit of pressure because that's where her nerves are. And then, then you got like a nice little grip, and then these two fingers are just going buck wild inside the pussy hole, the vagina, if you will. Wow. And, uh, you know, I was feeling pretty good about myself because I was like, oh, my God, she's coming so hard right now. <laughs> it's so wet. And then I, my hand got really warm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there you go. Just like that, dude. Randy Googled yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bowling ball grip. <laughs> yeah, you know what's up. Randy, back me up, though. I'm not wrong. The bowling ball grip? You know about it. Oh, my God. It's a, it's a, they, it's the player's anthem. It's, they it's teach the you that. The bowling ball grip. This guy in this video is he looks fucking like, uh, polo. Montel Williams. <laughs> the, the talk show host. Montel Williams is going to teach you how to bowl. So... You feel I'm going to town. I feel something hot, something hot, hot, hot in my hand, and I'm like, "This girl's coming hard." And then, oh my, it God. had a different kind of weight to it, <laughs> and I was like, "That's fucking weird." And I was like, in my mind, first place I go, I was like, "Oh, you know what? I think she started her period." I'm gonna be the cool guy. This is probably gonna be embarrassing for her. Uh. <laughs> And so just be cool. And I was just like, I remember like pulling my hand out and it was kind of dark. <laughs> and then being like, she's probably on her period. And then I looked down and I saw a clump of a uh, clump of what I could only describe as Mississippi riverbank mud in my hand. And it was very muddy. It was very loose. Loose like a barge had like a barge had run into it several times over the course of its and I just remember uh, she turned around and I put it up in her face and I go, you want to keep that? You said that? Yeah. Because at that point, I'm like, I got to make this fun. Oh, my God. I go, I... Uh, you want to keep that? <laughs> and she's like, what? Is, I'm, uh, oh, my God. And I was just like, that's straight up shit is what that is. That's doo-doo number two. <laughs> and she was extremely embarrassed. And she ran and locked herself in the bathroom, the one place I need to get to. And I'm like, hey, you got to get out of there. And I was like, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. So she hops in the shower. She's like, I'm getting in the shower. I'm getting in the shower. So she's in the shower, and I'm trying to be cool, man. I got a handful of doo-doo. I got a handful. Of doo-doo. I got big hands, and I got a handful of Mississippi mud. And I'm like, all right. Rocky road. Rocky road. And I'm just like, okay. This don't get sick. You're just going to make her feel worse. And I was like, all right, I'm cool. And I was cool until I started trying to clean my hand off. Because I don't know if you've ever had to scrape nope. shit out of your hand before. But as I started to move it and it was sticking to my fingers, I was like, <laughs> yeah, <it's- laughs> and she's in the shower. She's in the shower crying. And I'm retching in the toilet and like trying to like get it off of me and then wash my hands. That is exactly then, how you gag, too. Oh, man, it was rough. It was real rough. And I was trying to be cool and, like, uh, not make fun of her, but laugh about it. Uh, but I did have, she stayed in the shower for a while. And I had to, like, go out in the living room. And we hadn't been dating very long. This is very early, man. <laughs> Two months in, and I was, like, sitting in the living room, and I go, I'm giving myself, like, a pep talk. I'm like, you pretty much got two choices here. You can, A... Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. This is a game over situation. If you're a fucking coward. But if you're a real man, I was like, you just sit here. She's going to be feeling weird when she gets out of the shower. Just reassure that everything's okay. It happens. Like, it wasn't like we were 69 and she shit right on my forehead. Yeah, it just went. I mean, it just your been- hand. Yes. Be cool. And I, I chose B, and we've been together ever since. Because <laughs> if somebody shits in your hand, man, you have you fast-forwarded that relationship. That's not a two-month relationship. If someone shits in your hand and you don't leave, yeah, you fast-forwarded that relationship nine years. So if you – I know there are a lot of women and men or, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. whatever you are – person human that you're like oh my god we have to move in together and that's how we're going to move our relationship to the next level yeah, just shit we, in their have, hand. we have to get married no you just shit in their hand yeah. 
You take a big old dumpy shit. You take a bit. Right in their fucking hand. You little mud pie. A little freaking mud pie. You a little whoopie pie. pie. <laughs> Randy's going to throw up. A- <laughs> He's like, man, I've seen him over there twice, like, touches Adam's apple, like, oh, God. <laughs> you know, you take a little chocolate chip. Take a mud uh, pie. In the microwave, nice and creamy. All right. Put that in your hand. <laughs> Then you move it forward. I'm uh, so I think that was actually pretty similar to what I said. This story wise, because I remember afterwards being like, "You were like, I think I'm gonna, I might get out of here." And I was like, "If you leave, like, I am not gonna be okay." <laughs> I remember like crying. I think you said that after. I did. Like you I was came like, out and you're like, I'm surprised you're still here. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. And then you were like, I'm good because if you left, I would not be okay. That happened, but you, uh, you didn't talk. I stayed. Okay, okay. Of my own volition. All right, all right. Because I'm a good man. Because you're not a coward. Not a coward. Not he ain't scared of a little dookie. He ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> would you have been gone? gone? Uh. If if your girl right Maybe. now, if your girl no. right now shit in your hand, are you gone or are you fucking staying? Now I'm staying. You're staying. Now I'm staying. How yes. long you in? How long you been in for? Uh, that's a that's a tricky question. Yep, yeah, ballpark. Damn, well, he means he dunked in earlier. <laughs> yeah, or I uh, I don't want to give too much information, mm-hmm. but I think I said this before. I was m- my girlfriend's booty call. Yeah. All right, because she didn't live in town, and she would come right. in town and yeah. call me up. Uh, and then I don't know, she kind of moved closer to town, and we just started hanging out. Yeah. How long you in now? Six months? I don't know. Oh, uh, with all of that, a couple years, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. What point in that couple years would you cross the threshold of? About six months ago. Six months ago. Yeah. All about right. Maybe six months ago. All right. Four. So, yeah. How long does she live close to you? Uh, going on a year. All right. Okay. That's cool. So he'd be with her. Yeah. Now I would. Well, be. two months in, though, he may not have been. Two months in. Two know. months in. I don't know. He Depends. didn't have a big investment. No. Yeah. I was, but see, then. Jim Cramer, Slop City, stock tip. Two months the in. The girl shits in your hand, <laughs> you buy it. <laughs> I was still her booty call then, so I was. Randy so sells was, it. You know. I don't know. Yeah, man. Yeah. That I might have taken that as the sign to hit the road, you know. Well, sure. less in a lesser woman, I might have too. Might have been a, like a lesser, a, a lesser, uh, a lesser um, interest. If what I, does that mean? If I w- if it was a girl not as hot as me, uh, a girl just, not as cool. A, as A girl me? not as cool, as amazing as you. Yeah. Oh, that's all sweet. all around, not just physical beauty, but like uh, we'd also been friends. So yeah, it was like we were homies. You weren't just like a. Tinder girl that like shit in my hand and then no. and, uh, oh then you'd fucking be out of there you'd be like I'm taking this shit yeah, I'm wiping tinder, it on it, the if wall if a, yeah if a Tinder girl sits in my hand I'm fucking doing finger paints all the way out the door <laughs> on her couch <laughs> everywhere yeah dude you t- walk by her dog and you just <laughs> close his eyes with your shit fingers <laughs> um you know what I was <laughs> 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 On the way out, <laughs> it was nice to meet you, Snoop. And then you close his yeah. eyes. Instead of like get Boondock the, Saints, get, instead of putting yeah, two pennies on there, it's just the two out. little fucking shit fingerprints <laughs> on a dog's eyelid. Um, you know what I? Uh, the part that I thought was really funny and that Put I my remember hand in her fish tank and just swirl it around. <laughs> it's she, like those really angry yeah. beta fish. She, she just yeah, like she comes out all her and... fish her belly up in her own shit water. <laughs> she remember my name. Oh, man. You know what? I uh, When I told this story originally on the podcast, I talked about how after it happened, it had probably been a couple of months, and you went on a podcast with some dudes, and you didn't you didn't divulge my name. I didn't out you. You didn't out me. But I, I, was, I even lied and made it sound like it was a longer time ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't yeah. give specific detail. No, I'm, I'm not mad about it or anything, but the part that was the funniest to me was like... You telling me about it afterwards, or I think I listened to the episode. I can't remember, but there was like one guy that was like, "Ew," and then one guy that was like the cool hippie guy was like, "Nah, man, that's next level shit." You made her next <laughs> level come, yeah. yeah. And I was like, "That's right, 
Do have you ever made a girl come so hard that she shit into your hand? Because if you haven't, you're not ready to fuck on the Bell Reeve golf course. Yes. My friend. <laughs> I just love that that one guy was like, ooh, and the other guy's like, nah, brother, that's love. I love that that's the <laughs> only question people had for me <laughs> was the finger blast story. Uh, that's hilarious. Other than asking about the senior picture you posted earlier. Yeah, someone asked about that. And then someone also wanted to know about like us being in a relationship and like as comedians and how that is. It's great. Yeah, it's the best. We have a good time. We do not steal from each other. I saw that. Yeah. Sometimes we, you encroach. There's times there's encroachment. We got to have talks about like, hey, you kind of said a thing on your podcast about a bit I've been working on. Because I said it to you out loud, but we're usually pretty good about those convos. I just asked her last night. I'm writing a script, and I was like, hey, can I use – you got a funny line of dialogue on a joke? And she said no, and that was it. I I didn't say it like that. I was like, what if I put it on an album or something someday? Right, but uh, (laughs) you said no. Yeah. It was a nicer conversation, and then I was like, all right, cool. I won't use it. It's never – it's hard when you're around people all the time and like <clears throat> we're always joking about the same kind of, you know. Yeah. Like, and then it's like if something happens, it's a, who gets the bit. Yeah. Uh, and it's usually like, well, who got the laugh in the room? And that's to me is like, that's the decider. I'm like, well, when it happened live, who got the laugh? And she'd be like, you did. You were talking. Uh, I was like, well, then that's mine. And I'm like, and if you got it, then yep, it's yours. Then it's mine. Um, it's a pretty good, it settles almost all arguments, and we don't really have too many other than that. No, not really. I like dating a comic. They say don't do it, but I say, depends on the comic. If, I, if you don't have, like, crazy egos and you can really support and love each other, then go for it. Yeah, so I we mean. We do that. And I, I don't feel jealousy or bitterness. I'm, I'm your biggest champ. I think I'm your biggest cheerleader. For the well, most part, well, I try to really be anyway. Sweet. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I try to do the same thing for you, and it's like Plus you there's... get a Netflix special before me, and then I'll be like, "Fuck this bitch." She yeah. shit my hand. She's a hand shitting bitch. <laughs> Fuck it, <laughs> Fuck it. hand shitting bitch. I'll be over here with Randy, like she shit my hand, dude. <laughs> You'll be doing fucking interviews on TV, like crying, like she shit my fucking hand. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, cool. That's it. And the senior picture um, is, uh, there's a shirtless photo of me that was shared. And I will tell you that there were two people in the room when that photo was taken. Uh, A stranger. Mm -hmm. I got my senior pictures taken. And I don't, senior pictures are a weird thing. And I got a bit and I'm going to, I'm not going to do the bit and be a hack right now. But probably Randy remembers like, uh, how old are you, Randy? You don't have to say it out loud. Just. 80s kid. Bitty. Right? Yeah, I'm an 80s kid. Okay, so senior pictures were very much... Right. Why do, we don't need them anymore. We live in a world where like you have digital cameras and Instagram. Like These girls look better on Instagram than I ever looked in my professional senior pictures. But you used to have to go get them done, and it kind of like is a weird... Everyone got like sexy ones. Everyone had like a sexy one. Oh, yeah. Like there'd be... I remember all the girls would have like their senior pictures, and there'd be like one of them on the hood of a Camaro and like leather pants, and I'm like, you're a minor. Your pussy's out. Yeah, there would be like a sexy photo, you know, and it was like weird. And I went to a place uh, called Kathy's. Uh huh. That's she, where you went to yeah, get your look, photos look taken. These, look, you see what I'm saying? There's always some. Oh she's yeah. Always like laying on the ground. Look at that girl with her boobs out. She's like 16 years old. That's insane. <clears throat> but it's the thing. It's like our parents' new life is going to be hard, and they're like, "We got to sexualize you, make you an attractive mate, because you can't get through this life alone." Sure. <clears throat> so I was in the room, and I had done my little. I'd taken a picture with a cowboy hat on. I've never ridden a horse in my life. I didn't know who I was. You go get all the, it's your worst picture. Your pictures are your worst photos in school all the way up till your senior year. And then you just try to become another person. Yeah. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. a job as a cowboy. I'm Garth I Brooks. Should have been a cowboy. I'm a hard working man. <laughs> I wear a steel hard hat. Uh, <laughs> so I got those done. And then the camera lady was like, how about a few with your shirt off? A stranger. Really? Yeah. yeah. And my wow. mom, who was sworn to protect me for the day I was born, was like, uh, excuse me, <laughs> what did you just say to my son? And she was like, uh, I asked him to take a few pictures with his shirt off. 
And my mom said, uh, take your shirt off, baby. Show her what you're working with. And so in that picture, there I was sitting on a stool with my little hard nipples out. Yeah. And my 190-pound high school body that I'll never see again. Just that, that lady at Kathy's was waiting for that bowling ball grip. Yeah, she wanted it. She wanted it she hard. She could have gotten it, too. <laughs> uh, back in those days, she could have gotten it. Oh, I yeah, Randy, looking. you got to see this pic. Yeah, check that Ooh. shit out. Look at that. Fucking sexy boy. Man, that was 100 plus pounds ago, bro. It was a long time ago. Uh, but that's what happens, man. You take the senior picks and then, like, you, you just don't need them. And then, like, but I'm glad, and I say this in my bit, uh, my family was poor, but we weren't glamour shots poor. Do you ever have somebody in your high school had to get glamour shots as their senior pictures? No, but I worked at a glamour shots knockoff in South County Dude, Mall. Glamour shots called glamour yeah. shits. <laughs> what was it called? Hot shots. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> terrible. <laughs> Hey, come on down to Hot Shots. <laughs> the best way I can describe glamour <laughs> shots, and I'm sure Hot Shots, is it took a really young person. And made them look like a really old person. Oh yeah, trying to look like a young person. Like it would be like a, it'd be like an eighteen year old girl like that with a feather boa and yep. soft lighting and have like the eighties style hair. But it'd be like I. <laughs> it's so bad. It was oh, called man. Hot Shots because they didn't have money for the AC. Yeah, and that's like all these photos, dude. There'd be like one or two people. Oh, in my look class. at that lady! Go up, go up, go up! Click on that one. They'd have, right you like, yeah. <laughs> They'd have you like airbrushed. Oh, oh boy. I feel bad for her. Okay, that's, I that's I do feel much. kind of bad now. That guy though, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> Dude, he's ready to bowling ball someone with that class ring on. He's ready to lose that class ring in someone's pussy for sure. That guy means business. Hello. Look at Hello. him. That's hilarious. Oh yeah, those fucking glamour but shots. But that's what it was. It made it was like make a young person look like an old person dressed as a young person. It was real weird, like backlighting, feathery. <laughs> that one's good. There's some good. No, well, there's a bunch of good ones. Hello, trying to find like one that you can clearly tell was a senior picture. Could have been that guy. That one. That every woman looked like Dolly Parton, essentially. Yeah. Down there, that's one. That that girl's probably young, and she looks like. She looks like a 40-year-old woman trying to, like, save her marriage. She's probably, like, 18 yeah. years old. It's really it's, weird. They, the way they make them look is just bizarre. It's bizarre. I mean, I remember it's wanting. Bizarre. Look at that. I, you know what, Randy? You wanted to hit that in 82. Don't lie to me, dude. I probably that, did. You probably we both did it. Wanted, we both uh, wanted to hit that in 82. Actually, I had a couple girlfriends with hair like that. <laughs> yeah. White rain. That fucking white snake hair. Dude, the 80s put the... The 80s put a hole in the ozone a million miles wide. With just all from the, the fucking, fucking hairspray. Hair spray. Yeah, it's... There's no way. That's Demi Moore in the glamour shot. That's Aquaman. hilarious. Oh, God. That's Demi Moore as a model for glamour shots. I, as a, yeah, I mean, I wanted a glamour shot so bad. Yeah, I mean, everyone did. But I it was such a gross, yeah. not good picture. Did you take the pictures, Randy? Yeah, I was uh, a photographer and a salesman. I actually quit the job because I felt bad selling. Some lady came in with her kids, and they were like, well, we don't have enough money, but maybe if we don't pay this bill, we could buy these pictures. And I was like, dude, don't buy these pictures. They suck. Let me print you a bunch off off the computer. We'll put them in this little keychain, and you can just you know have these. And I quit. I felt bad. Yeah. So that's what happened. You're a good man, Randall Cash. Didn't that I am now. shit happen to you yeah. when you did the I portraits? Yeah, I sold. I was worse than that. I was the guy that sold the appointments for, like, oh, for people to come in and, like, they were like, you get a $10 sitting fee, and that was to reserve the appointment. And I got to keep that mo- I was supposed to split that money with the company, and I never gave them any. I just kept it. Kept that Dude, shit. Dude, I worked with guys that were snakes, man. They'd be like, oh, you're going to get 64 wallets? Three eight by tens, and I was like, "Oh, you want to come in? We're gonna have a old, we're gonna have a classic model T car in here, and a bunch of costumes and Tommy guns. You can dress up like a gangster, like Bonnie and Clyde. Real, take a bunch of real cool pictures. The people would give them like eighty bucks, dude. They'd keep the money, come back to Kmart the next week, and there it would just be like your life touch, you know." marble backdrops that you would normally see and be like i thought there was going to be like a tommy gun and we get to dress like gangsters they're like wait like, i thought you were going to put an explosion yeah, in the background like, we don't know what the hell you're talking about and it just be, oh no i couldn't do it man like i could not like look at myself in the mirror and like yeah. keep doing that i was like i'm out 
most of my sales jobs were that way, like telemarketing and stuff. Yeah, I don't have the stomach for it, man. I was working with this dude, and we were in the South County Mall, and there's a lot of Bosnian people down there, and he was so dumb that he goes, he had learned Spanish, enough Spanish to be able to sell a portrait in Spanish. Okay. You know, just like, yeah. he just enough to, be, to say the price and the number of wallets you get so he could get Spanish families. And uh, he goes up to this dude, and he's like, hey, you want to? Come over here. Let me talk to you about uh, signing up. Get you some family portraits made. And then the guy's like, "No English, no English, no speak English." And he goes, "No English." He goes, "Bosnia, Bosnia." And he goes, "Oh, Bosnia." So you speak Spanish? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> not even close to where. Oh my god! What a fucking idiot! And he I just laughed so hard. Off. Yeah, I laughed really hard. Oh fuck. Old glamour shots. Good old glamour shots. We'll have to get some of those done sometime. I'd really like to do that with you. Yeah. We'll get one where I'm looking up and you're looking down. Be our album cover. We'll I love it. Our couple's album. Yeah. It's great. I'll do my hair like white snake bitches. I love it. We forgot to do the religious song at the top. Oh, yeah. And I, I just realized that. I know. The one thing we planned was to. to do- fucked it up. What is your, well, because Libby sings, let's close out with this because I am about to piss in my pants. Okay. And we're going to close out. Libby's favorite song is, which I learned and I thought it was a bit, and it is so good. It's the, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings. You know that song? It's a good one, yeah. Why are you laughing? Like a spiritual one. I just it's, been thinking about that song. It's the it's the stupidest one. Where I've the, heard it in my life. And, and he like will that. raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you up. I don't even know the rest <clears throat> of the words, but I love it. That shit's good. That song slaps. That's her favorite religious that song. That song slaps. Jim Cramer here with Slap City Stock Tick. <laughs> eagle's <laughs> wings. I'm buying are you um bing. what is so what's your what's your favorite religious song well i when i was a kid my grandma used to watch this movie called elmer gantry a lot with burt lancaster okay i don't know if randy's seen that you've you seen it i absolutely haven't and he plays like a shuck shuck and jive guy who kind of gets into the prosperity gospel and it's a pretty good movie it's okay a pretty good old film i'm gonna look up burt lancaster right quick so they i know what's know, going on yeah but he knows all the songs and he knows how to like manipulate people. Okay. They got Ooh. a they got a version where they're in a black church singing this. Uh, it's a song called Canaan Land. Have you ever heard of that? Anybody? <laughs> He's oh cute. man, it's good. Oh yeah, Burt Lancaster, sexy guy, sexy boy. I love, and that that song was good. I used to love. That was the one song in church. I'm like, this song kind of slaps, dude. Like I would, I'll be honest with you. It's on my it's on my saved songs on Spotify. Sometimes when I'm on the road, I'll be like, you know what? You know what's going to get me from Wichita to Tulsa right now? Jesus. A little Canaan land, that's what. Okay. So, well, it's just like, I'm on my way up to Canaan land. I'm on my way. He's on his way up to Canaan land. I had a mighty hard day up to Canaan land. I'm on my way. Glory, hallelujah. I'm on my way. He's on his yeah. way. I and love it. They like they speed it up. You know, you can never fuck. <laughs> oh, with, and you then they're never, fucking. You cannot fuck with a black choir. They, no fucking way. They'll fucking rip a song so hard that you're like, damn, dude. Yeah, dude, and fucking that could puss- be a top forty hit just yeah. because you fucking. If you can find the clip from, I don't know if you can play it, but I don't know if again, pussy ass white people are like, and he will raise you. Yeah, I've you heard up. white versions like, of the song where like. I'm on my way, and I'm like, oh, nodded. I know, I do know that song. Up to Canaan land, I'm on my way. Like, <laughs> Your fucking eyes. No one's gonna come from that. Oh man, I love get, it. I love it beat. when you sing. You gotta get the backbeat going. Uh oh. Uh, just, just hit low power mode. We're done low power mode. Um. Oh, it's probably. That's okay. I'm on my we'll way up to Canaan Land. I love it. I'm on my way up to Canaan Land. I had a mighty hard day, but <laughs> he holds my hand. I'm on my way. Glory, hallelujah. I'm on my way. <laughs> okay, can we close out uh, this Slop City Old episode Bert. with my favorite thing in the world that you sing? 
<laughs> no, what? We're not we're singing anymore, are we? Dooley, coming up to holler. Dooley, trying to make a dollar. Dooley, trying to make a swallow and a payback someday. <laughs> oh, my God, the fucking eyes. Do you know eyes. from? You're watching Andy Griffith's show? Oh, my God, it's the funniest fucking Eons thing in the world. Me and my brother used to pester my mom with that song. It's like a, it's a country. He'll, it's the guy that played Uncle Jesse on Dukes of Hazard. It was like the only other thing I've ever seen him in, and he was like the dad of these bootlegger boys that lived up in the mountains in the Andy Griffith town. Mayberry, and they were singing that like, I'll sing a song for you, Andy. <laughs> Dooley, coming up a holler. Dooley, trying to make a dollar. Dooley, give me just a swallow and a payback someday. Oh, I love it. I love it. Your fucking eyes cross. It's the stupidest <laughs> thing in the world. Oh, right. boy. That's it. Okay, Babe Bull, it was very fun having you on. Thanks for doing the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I'm sure... Libby will be back next week for all those of you who were disappointed by this. It episode. was great. You were wonderful. You're fucking hilarious. I love you. Thanks for being here, Randall. I love you. Thank you. We love you. And Likewise. um you know, do our normal close out, the Ash Ashley Gay. I don't know what we fucking do. Do we just say cut? And yeah. That's fuck- yeah. There we go. All right. And cut. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, play Scott Schaefer's fart, Shenandoah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and play his long rip. That's Scott Schaefer's fart, Rafe. <laughs> that one? <laughs> That's his fart. That's a good one. That fart slaps, Scott. Hell yeah. All right, we love y'all. Thank you so much for being slop fans. That last bubble barely popped. Yeah. It was like real slow, like. <laughs> it's fucking stinky. The last air bubble almost just stayed in his pants. All right. Love y'all. Bye. Mwah. Thanks for having me. See you.